Greetings, everybody. My name is Maggie Cavanaugh. I'm the host of Keys Your Best Life, and I am here tonight with two very amazing men. I have John Smith and Matthew Ketchum with me tonight, but you may know John as J.W. Kitson from the novel Song of the Tree Frog. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, we're going to talk about some interesting topics from this book and some upcoming projects, but Matthew played Michael in the film, in the feature film. And how wonderful is that to have both an actor and the co-producer and writer all right here together tonight to chat with us. So welcome to the broadcast. Thank you so much. It's uh, quite a privilege and an honor. Thank you. Uh, well, I am honored to interview you guys because I absolutely fell in love with the storyline. But more than that, I love to see men of faith walking in their calling, doing what God called them to do to encourage the body. And, uh, you know, listen, Matthew, you're, you're quite young, but you are really been out there as an actor. What drew you into that? Well, I think I've always been interested in acting and film for a while, but for a lot of things, it's hard to get your foot actually into the door. And that's where John came in to actually help me with that. Um, it's really a lot about networking and who you know. And thank goodness I knew John, who is a filmmaker, producer, and writer. And he saw me fit to be the role as Michael in Song of the Tree Frogs, which um, was definitely an eye-opening experience um, because I used to watch films and think, man, I could do that, that looks easy. And um, until you do it and then you're in front of the camera and all the anxiety kicks in and all the other emotions. Um, and then you really see what it's like. But um, for my first film song, The Tree Frogs, it was an amazing experience. And um, I really can't wait to do as many films as I can. You know, that's amazing because you you appear to be such a seasoned actor and to be new in the game. That's natural talent. There's a difference between learned talent or learned gifting and you go and you train and all of this and so forth. But you just took that role and it was so emotional. Uh, there was a scene in it and I'm not going to give it away because I want you guys to all go watch it. But there was a scene in there where I was like, I mean, I can literally feel what you were experiencing and that takes true talent. How did it feel to play such an intense role? Because the adult Michael had been through some stuff and, you know, I understand you mentioned, you know, anxiety on the films, that that kind of stuff. It can be overwhelming. But just having to step into the shoes of someone in that role, what does that feel like? Well, it took a lot of practice um, with the character layers and actually developing Michael. But um, actually getting onto the scene and it's really just a build up until they say action. And once that happens really all of the anxiety does go away after that. It's just the build up to the actual scene, which really freaks me and a lot of other actors out. And then it's pretty much all just um, muscle memory and your emotions going through the scene. And I had the great opportunity to work with Cameron McKendry, who was an amazing actor to say the least and building off of what he was, um, how he was acting towards me, which really helped me during my scene. That's great. That is wonderful. You have been exposed to some very impressive actors and actors in the industry. Uh, I know that Karen Amber Crumbery was in there. So how did you get her, John? <laughs> was she <laughs> Actually, that was Josh Menning from Menning Films. And uh, I'll never be able to say enough about Josh and his talent and his, oh. his faith, uh, just his drive and determination. And uh, he met Shannon Fields at the International Christian Film Festival the year before, actually sat at the table with her. And they didn't really even discuss acting. They, they discussed a lot about photography because uh, she has family members that do that as well. And, and uh, Josh and his wife, Danielle, are both uh, professional wedding photographers. So uh, he and Shannon hit it off and he came back and he said, you know what? I really would love to see Shannon Fields play the role of Sarah and uh, who's really the hero of the story. And she was in Facing the Giants, of course, and, and uh, just a very seasoned and uh, wonderful person and great actress. And then uh, he said, you know, I wanna reach out to Karen Abercrombie. And uh, three times he reached out to her and uh, she finally called him and said, hey, send me the script. And, and within two hours, she said, I read the script, I have to do this role. Oh. So she played the role of June and actually won Best Actress at uh, Content 2020. Um, you know, film festival. So she is an amazing person uh, to work with. 
Yeah, she, uh, I, I loved her in War Room. And I also loved, uh, you know, I could, whenever I seen Sarah, I was like, honey, that, that's the lady from Facing the Giants. You know, I was so <laughs> excited because she is a great actress as well. There were so many really gifted people in that film. I absolutely loved it. And Josh Minning and you worked on another project. You know, I watched on Pure Flix, the one in regards to the talking about the heroin epidemic. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Gateway to Hope, Overcoming hard. Heroin. Yeah. So... Actually, was three films on Pure Flix right now. And uh, uh, Song of the Tree Frogs was one of the exclusive films for this month. And then uh, one that we did back in 2017, uh, it was actually originally called Unwavering, but they have it as Unwavering Faith. And that's about human trafficking. And so I had a little little role in that one. And, um, you know, so, but I co-produced uh, with him on that film as well. So we've, we've had a great, great run with him. He was, uh, Matthew was in another film with him uh, called Beasts of Our Fathers. A lot of times we do something very serious and then we're like, ah, we have to do something just for fun, you know? <laughs> I've seen the trailer for that. So, Matthew, are you excited about, has is, is that been completed or is that still filming? That's Which complete, the right? Beast of Our Fathers? Yeah, it's finished. Yeah, it's, it is definitely finished and, uh, and it's out there as well on Amazon and all that, so... Okay, now I have to watch that one because I only seen the trailer and I'm looking forward to it, but it had me intense. That's the one about Bigfoot, <laughs> right? Yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So actually, believe it or not, uh, the gentleman who played the Bigfoot character is Jorn Aquila, and he is going to be playing opposite Matthew in uh, a film that we have coming up here with Cameron Arnett and uh, Karen Abercrombie, as well as uh, Candace uh, Kirkpatrick, Eric Hansen. And, uh, but uh, he's going to be playing, uh, Matthew and, and Jordan are going to be playing, um, you know, opposites on that. Um, and uh, they become very good friends in the storyline. But it's about uh, racism within the church. And, I can't wait uh, for that. That's a needed mm -hmm. message. Everybody mm -hmm. needs to hear about that. Candace told me about that. I absolutely love her. And Cameron mm -hmm. Arnett, he is very impressive. Uh, yes. He was the dad, for those of you that aren't sure, you know, if you might not know who he is, he was the dad and overcomer. Mm -hmm. And that was, uh, he did amazing, as well as many other films. And that's what I mean when I'm saying, Matthew, you're working with some big people. These are people in the Christian industry that are recognized, true, tried, tested, that not only are using their gifts and talents, they're actually called to the industry. And mm -hmm. I think that's a beautiful thing. So anybody can go on Pure Flix right now and catch the Unwavering Faith. Mm -hmm. and the heroin epidemic uh -huh. uh, and yeah, gateway to hope overcoming heroin yes now that I, I the documentary that. section okay in the documentary section i watched that y'all need to watch it everybody needs to be aware of what we are dealing with and they man, josh and you all that worked on that did an amazing job because that's a very difficult topic to tackle mm -hmm. and you did it and you did it with taste and class and it wasn't in a situation where um, people that were watching that were struggling would feel condemned. It was right. the message of hope. And that's mm -hmm. a very delicate dance when you're talking about drug abuse. So, mm -hmm. so let's talk a little bit about Song of the Tree Frogs. Okay. So y'all, this is the cover of the book. And the book is excellent. I mean, I couldn't set it down. And I got my copy. I actually, usually I read the book and then I see a movie. But this time I saw the movie and then read the book. And I just like kept flipping the pages. So I already knew the storyline, but it was really hard for me to put it down. So what inspired you, uh, John, to write the storyline? Well, I um, I wrote it. Uh, actually, Matthew's on the front cover of that one, too. Yeah, <laughs> Guy on the left. Hey, hold, on. Yeah. <laughs> hold on. Yeah, there you go. There's and, Matthew. Uh, okay, you yeah. guys look at this face. You're gonna see him everywhere. Wait, well, Matthew. Yeah, there. <laughs> uh, Morgan James is my. Uh, it's a Christian publisher based in New York, and and they're all over the world. They're in Australia and uh, in England and so forth. And they uh, wanted to do a different book cover. Uh, I just actually, believe it or not, right before Matthew uh, came to the house tonight, uh, I was talking to Tyler Hill who's on the original book cover of Song of the Tree Frogs. And I was just talking to him and, and uh, pretty exciting stuff, you know, going on uh, with, you know, the, the actual, you know, movie in the book. Um, and, uh, but as far as the inspiration behind it, uh, I'll be honest with you. I took an adolescent literature class um, back in 1987, I believe it was at uh, Kent State University. And I had this professor, her name was at the time, it was Dr. Carol, it's uh, Dr. Horvath now. 
and I just saw her not too long ago, but she was probably one of the greatest inspirations I ever had. My dad was a writer, um, you know, and I remember him doing an awful lot of writing here at the house. So I had some inspiration there, but my first story that I wrote was like at age 10 and believe wow. Thought it was about a Bigfoot character, and here I ended up co-producing a film about a you know, Bigfoot character. But anyway, uh, but I wrote some of the Tree Frogs probably about 17 years ago. Threw it on a bookshelf and didn't do anything with it. Wow! And um, a friend of mine down the street, uh, she's my excellent uh, book critic. Her name is Dottie. Uh, she's actually mentioned in the book uh, the character. And uh, so anyway, short story here. Um, she wanted to read something fiction uh, because I've all, I was pretty much known for nonfiction writing that I was doing inspirational stories and some Christian apologetics. And so Dottie said, Hey, my husband's on the way to the store. You know, why don't you send that manuscript down, but give me a few weeks because my dog's been really sick. Well, two nights later, she called me about 1030 at night. It came up on the caller ID. She's crying. And I was like, Oh, Dottie, I said, I'm sorry. Did your dog Spencer die? And she's like, no, that stupid thing is fine. She said, I read your novel. I couldn't, I couldn't stop reading. And she's the one who really inspired me to, to start seeking representation. And I did have uh, some very nice bites on it, uh, but they, you know, they told me, they said, you have got to reduce this. So it's 40, about 42,000 words less than the original manuscript. Wow. So, yeah. Wow. It's such yeah. an intense story. And you did such a great job of, of detailing where people could really step in, feel the passion. Mm -hmm. And again, you know, Matthew, I could just, when you were talking, especially the scene in the woods, and I'm not going to tell you about it because you got to go watch it. But I was sitting there on the edge of my seat and one minute I wanted to cry. And the next minute I was like, yeah, you got this. I, I, I wanted to actually cheer you on and say, you know, look, it's going to be okay, Michael. <laughs> you all, whenever I was putting together some of the work for this i kept when i go to write matthew i'd write michael because i'm so connected with the character uh, uh, anyone who has gone through any trauma or any abuse or anything like that they really can see um they can see themselves in the film or they can see someone that they loved in the film so and, um matthew was it hard to play someone who had been just so uh, abused throughout the story uh when you were preparing for it you know, not having a grid for that, were you, you know, did you have to kind of like turn off you and say, how does an actor do that? How do you step into such a role where someone is just really broken? It was definitely difficult to say the least. Um, but John helped me a lot with um, developing Michael as an actor with the character layers and who he actually is because this was my first ever chance on camera. So, I definitely didn't want to mess it up. So I did, I tried as hard as I could to um, portray who Michael was. Um, and I think, I think a lot of actors really delve into the emotional aspect and go towards their past to really bring out the emotional um, portrayal that they're supposed to do. And um, I'm still working on that, but it is, uh, I think it is a very powerful tool in the world of film is to really, um, become the become the character. So when you say character layering, so for people that don't know what that means, and, and I know, you know, obviously since John wrote about character, he knew character inside and out. How, what does that mean? Can you explain that a little bit so the viewers understand? Mm -hmm. um, so it's kind of trying to become the character in a sense and um, try to build on their emotions um, and not use your own emotions because you're not going in there as Matthew or John or whoever you are, you're going in there as the character. So the more you can develop who they are in your own sense or in the script, uh, the better it will become. Wow, that was amazing. I was very, very impressed with your role in that. So having seen the younger Michael, you know, obviously we all know when there's a film where there's somebody young, a young person plays it and someone older, an older person plays it. But it's almost like you just picked up where he left off. And so that young man was very gifted as well to be able to pull that off. I was thinking to myself, ah, oh, the drama, you know, and then to step in as the adult character and still be able to let the audience know, hey, this is, you know, I, it, it just, I was very, very impressed. Matter of fact, I think you're my favorite character, but don't tell the other characters. Okay? <laughs> just because of the compassion that you had and the concern that you were able to portray, 
just about your own trauma, but towards your brother. So for those of you who are there wondering what I'm talking about, I'm telling you, you need to go watch the movie. Matter of fact, after this broadcast tonight, you can go see it. I, I watched it on Amazon, but it's on Apple. It's on, isn't it on Apple? You can buy it on Apple? Yeah, iTunes, uh, Google Play, um, of course, Amazon Prime. And I'm trying, there's one other format. <laughs> uh, mm. Of course, it's, you know, uh, Pure Flix. And uh, so, yeah, it's uh, quite a few platforms. Absolutely. You guys got to check this out. And I encourage you, um, for those of you that are in ministry, there's some clips out of there that I'm like, I think I'm going to use that when I teach on that topic. So know <laughs> that your film will be used in little snippets. Do I have your permission? <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. That's what it's about. Yeah, there were some scenes in there that I was like, it is very powerful, powerful, powerful. So let's talk a little bit about this upcoming project because I am super excited about it. And now I know with COVID last year, it's amazing that you guys got anything done, but you persevered and still was able to get so much done when other people would have been just thrown in the towel going, we'd have to wait. But this love one another, when is that going to come out approximately? We want to just yeah, it's, it's, it is difficult because once again, uh, we, you know, you never know if there's going to be another spike or anything like that. I, I think our, our goal is to try to get it done as soon as possible because it is such a relevant film, obviously, with today's uh, society, uh, syst you know, systematic racism being discussed so much and everything. But uh, it, it is just it, it is an African-American couple that move into a neighborhood and uh, there's this hidden bias that's there, this hidden racism and uh, Matthew's character, uh, uh, he plays the role of, a, of, of Tyler, and he is absolutely, he and his father at odds with each other because father is holding on to these, these uh, antiquated, you know, uh, uh, stereotypes and so forth, whereas, my, you know, Matthew's character, he's like, dad, come on, you know, <laughs> and so that puts his family at odds, but at the same time, you have this uh, uh, awesome Christian couple that move in next door, and uh, he, you know, and Matthew befriends their son. Uh, and it's, it, it's just, you know, once again, it is when you see, like Dr. Martin Luther King said this, and I think it's probably, uh, you know, really uh, relevant to this. He said that one of the greatest uh, forms of segregation in America happens at 11 o'clock in the morning, Sunday morning. And because there are just so many people that where you just do not see a combination, even though we're all going to the same place, we know Jesus Christ is our savior. It doesn't matter because Christ came to die for sin, not skin. Uh, and you sit there and you think to yourself, we're all going to the same place. Why can we not fellowship together here and do it wholeheartedly because we are all members of the same body of Christ. So uh, that's, that's really the message of it. Uh, the, the couple's invited by Matthew's character to the, to his church and, and so they go into church and there there's some people that are like very, very welcoming. And then there's a few that are not. And and it just sort of, uh, you know, stems from that. But uh, here we find out that uh, the character of, of uh, Matthew, he uh, actually has I'm not going to give away anything else than this, is that he has a terminal illness. And uh, and it, and and the, the hope is, is that there is some way for him to um, have a donor that is able to help him. And I'll leave it at that. But uh, wow. Candace Kirkpatrick plays mm -hmm. his mother, Jan uh, Wallace, in the movie. And I absolutely love Candace. Oh, yeah. we're going to have fun working with her. I'm sure you've already started the process. But yeah. she, I would love for her to be. And now, of course, I'm not saying that she would be old enough to be. But I would love to have her as a mother, even if it was in a film. <laughs> yeah. Love yeah, we went that. on a family vacation to Tennessee this past um summer and we got to meet Candace and Tina Gallo. Uh, so that was, you know, one of the highlights of the, of the, of the trip together. And, and we were very excited to, to be able to just meet them and, and have, have uh, time to fellowship with them. Absolutely. Great people in Tennessee, Jesus loving people. This mm -hmm. film is, it. I'm telling you, the timing is epic. It's just perfect. Mm -hmm. um, there is so much needed um, for people in the church, in the body of Christ to talk about this. And many times, you know, people run from these topics and you guys are running right to it and making a film about it. So I am excited about it. Looking forward to that. Now, when that comes out, will that be going on to the same type of platforms that your previous film has been on so people can find it? With that one, uh, you know, given the circumstances and the and the topic itself, we once we're on God's God's good humor with it. I mean, we're just going to see where where He takes it. And 
and that's really the approach that we take. I mean, uh, you know, I mean, we're we're thrilled to have you know Song of the Tree Frogs on you know Pure Flicks, um, you know, and uh, so we just you know we'll wait and see where it all goes. I love Pure Flix. When it came out, I was so excited to have some good, clean mm -hmm. entertainment. So yeah. I'm, I'll definitely be watching for that. So for those of you watching uh, this broadcast, know that when it gets closer to time and that film comes out, I'll be running my little mouth about it and telling you where <laughs> it's going. So make sure that you look out for that. So, wow. So, Matthew, you're just like not getting any break at all. You're just like pulling these acting roles out pretty quick. So impressive very very impressive so for you being as young as you are and as gifted as you are if you could play the ideal character in any type of film whether it be thriller or whether it be you know uh, uh, inspirational or whether it be you know i don't know race cars anything what, what would <laughs> your favorite role what is your fantasy role i guess hmm. <laughs> It's funny you said race cars because he just had a lead role in a film in Michigan. Uh, he may want to speak to that. Oh, do tell. First, tell us what your role is, and then I want to hear about that film. <laughs> um, I think it was, yeah, it was October of last year. I had um, a lead in a film called Best Years Gone. It was, in sense, it was a dark comedy. Um, but I had uh, like 48 hours notice to do it. What? I took it as soon as I had yeah. the chance. And um, it was an amazing experience. The team was great. It was a, it was a rather a large production, and it was definitely eye opening to work with uh, a lot of like people I've never even met or seen before. Um, which I think is just one of those experiences that grow you as an actor and as a person, professionally and um, through friendships. So that was it was great. I'm I was really happy I took the um, took the opportunity to go up there. I think I drove like four and a half hours up to Michigan with uh, like two days notice and I didn't look back. That's amazing to get thrown into a role like that. See, that's what I'm talking about, guys. Whenever you see people that train and I'm not knocking getting a, a degree in acting at all. I'm not. OK, but I'm assuming as young as you are, that you have not trained in this, that you were just gifted. Is that correct? Um, or gifted is stretch, but thank you so much. Um, <laughs> no, I believe you're gifted. <laughs> A uh, forty-eight hours notice to go play in a in a, a major role in a film and and do it and do it well is that's impressive, Matthew. So, well, we need to, we need to give uh, uh, Jean Wenger the credit for that from uh, Treasure Coast Talent. She she yeah. called and said, "Hey, I need to get in touch with Matthew." And he was actually on his way to the house because we had a pod or a um, a Zoom meeting with uh, Karen and uh, Cameron Arnett and so forth. And and so. It worked out perfect. And sure enough, 48 hours later, he was he was on set. So wow, that's incredible. Incredible. So since you've been in the race car, I guess that wouldn't be your dream role because we got to <laughs> we got to shoot yeah, a little bit higher now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, Tough question. Well, I think I'd like to be a superhero like every kid's dream. <laughs> Don't know what superpower I would have in a sense, but um, some type of Marvel movie, maybe. Would be awesome. cool, but um, <laughs> that would be great. I think everybody wants to be a superhero in some way, and you keep up the good work because you're doing an amazing job. So I'm very, I'm very thankful for your relationship with him, John, because I know you said he's kind of like a son to us, and I love that when people connect in community and they that iron sharpens iron, and mm -hmm. absolutely, and and you can open doors for each other. You know, you was he mm -hmm. was giving him accolades for opening the door, and I'm certainly glad that he did by the leading of the Lord because. You, you need to keep doing what you're doing. So you're doing a great well, job. Yeah. And I, and to add to that, I mean, uh, he just, he really came out of nowhere with it. Um, and uh, so that's why I always said it was God driven because of the simple fact that it, you know, I mean, our, our family uh, very close to him now, I'm close to, you know, his dad, his like, his dad, Brian is like a brother to me now. I mean, and, uh, and I communicate with Matthew's mom um, and we just, yeah, I don't know. I, it's just it's just one of those things that happens, and and um, we're very blessed. I, I more so than we could even begin to imagine. So, God is so faithful, and He puts people at the right places at the right time for the right reason. And I know that this film was definitely a, a God designed thing, and He used you for it. So, thank you for being obedient to write the book, because yeah. without the book, the film wouldn't have been made. So, there right. we go. Well, thanks to Josh Manning on that one, but. Uh, 
Yeah, the book is out there. It's at Barnes and Noble, Amazon, and you know, actually Walmart, Target. I mean, whatever you can order it through any major uh, retail bookstore. And um, and uh, I, I laugh because everybody, you know, the, the, um, it's on six different continents. And they said, well, what about the seventh one? I said, well, they just don't have a Barnes and Noble down in Antarctica now. So, but uh, so Morgan James has been real good about um, allowing it, you know, out there in so many different, uh, you know. But uh, I, you know, personally. I like, you know, the novel goes into so much more detail, obviously. And always, always. And but Josh, I, I told Josh I would write the screenplay for this one. And uh, he's credited, of course, with the screenplay because he he added his own, you know, uh, twists and whatever he needed to. But people have said it's probably one of the closest uh, uh, screenplays to the, the actual novel. And I said, well, that's because the person who wrote the novel got to write, you know, the major part of the screenplay. So, um and I, you know, as I said, I just sort of, you know, I know the story like the back of my hand and that's how it ended up. So, yeah, I can see that having, you know, like I said, usually I'll read a book and then you say, oh, I want to see the movie and see if the movie measures up, you know, and the book are always not not knocking on Josh because he did an amazing, amazing mm -hmm. job. But the books always give a little details that you really can't get into a film. Mm -hmm. So it was probably, I don't know that I've ever seen anything that close, but it was, it was very, um, the, the book I couldn't put down and the film was the same way. And so usually you don't get that same reaction, you know, mm -hmm. the film kept me on the seat of my, you know, on the edge of my seat like this going, no, 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 don't do that. And, and the book was like, <laughs> yeah. So I'm certainly uh, honored to be able to interview you guys. And if you could leave the audience with a key, either one of you, a key, um, whether it be, you know, word of encouragement, scripture, quote, anything, what would that key be? Uh, well, when we look at the chaos of the world and everything, and we see so much going on, I, I always go back to the fact that. Uh, one of the, you know, obviously the greatest gift that we have is, you know, Ephesians 2, 8, and 9, you know, for it is by grace you've been saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. But I always talk about that last, you know, that the verse 10, you know, that we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. And the blessings that come as a result of that, the blessings of people that come into our lives. Uh, my wife and I, Connie, uh, she is uh, she's a speech pathologist and she works, uh, you know, with many kids that, you know, she just absolutely would like to bring home. You know, she just uh, loves her students. And uh, but, you know, Connie's, you know, a great fan of, of mine to be able to push me through my daughter, Madison. Um, you know, we just as I said, we've had a lot of blessings in our lives. And, and I think about the fact that, you know, there are good works for us to do that God has ordained for us to do. Um, it, we just need to get, you know, to doing them. And in this great chaos that we have, and amongst all of that, we can have a peace that actually passes understanding. And we have peace because, of, you know, we've been justified by faith, uh, and, you know, through Jesus Christ. And um, I, I don't know why this keeps hitting me, but um, Corey Tim Boom, you know, the the story of uh, the, the hiding place, yes. uh, Corey Tim Boom, you know, survived, was the only family member of her, uh, you know, that survived the Holocaust. And um, somebody just the other day was was talking about their problems. And, and they said, I just feel like I'm like at, at the bottom. I, I just feel, you know, and I said, you know, there is no pit so deep that God's love is not deeper still. And that's a great quote from her. But I also like one from Dr. Tony Evans. that says, you know, sometimes you have to hit rock bottom to realize that Jesus Christ is the rock at the bottom. Mm -hmm. And um, so, the you know, once again, I just encourage people. Um, you know, my key to to um, my ministry is the fact of, look, allow God just to use you, speak boldly. You're there to encourage people. I just was talking, as I said, to one of the book cover models uh, from the original one. And I said, you know, I, I a lot of times I want to go back and you, you look at all of the problems that we've gone through. And I realized those types of circumstances and situations that I've been in have prepared me for the ministry that I have today. And had I not gone through those situations, uh, you know, obviously, you know, tribulation brings patience and patience brings hope and, you know, of course, develops character and so forth. And uh, and I think that that's just that would be my key to leave to people is that the key to your life is to have a close relationship with Jesus Christ 
so that you are able to see and live above every, uh, just all the din and all of the noise that we hear in our chaotic world today. Wow. That, that's good. That's really good. See y'all, I didn't share with y'all a while ago, but he actually has been a preacher and he still is a, a minister uh, to many. And, and that is such a word of encouragement for me myself, you know, because we do need to keep our focus on the work of the cross and, and not, you know, uh, not be moved by the natural circumstances we see going on in the world. So listen, y'all, you've got to check out this movie. You've got to get the book. And I encourage you to go back and get uh, the book prior to this. Now, there, I didn't even mention that, but there was a book prior to this that's out there for them to get and other many inspirational books that you can get on his website. And I will put that link for those of you watching this on social media uh, where you can just click on it. But if you're watching this on Creative Motion, what is the website where they can find all of your good information? Uh, JW Kitson, K-I-T-S-O-N dot com. And uh, my my agent, Laura Helmling, uh, she lives in Chicago and she's the one that does a lot of that uh, website work for me. So I'm really, really thankful for that. And it's absolutely very informative. It's got a lot of great stuff on there. And I want you guys to be watching for Matthew because you're going to see him. OK, remember this face. You're going to yeah. see this face. And thank you for being on the call tonight with us. It was yeah. an honor to meet you. And John, I look forward to all your new projects and we're super excited. Listen, y'all be watching for them and we'll see you next time right here on Keys to Your Best Life. Thanks.